Morning guys. Now it's another day on the Supra. So we're coming up with a bit of a plan. So we've done a sort of a test fit here. It looks like this. So most of the hoses are done. No hose clamps yet. Top and bottom radiator hose are done. Everything's marked up. Uh, the shifter's giving me a little bit of a an issue. So the gearbox we bought, which was, which I knew this was going to happen, so it wasn't unpredicted. So the gearbox we got was a brand new R154 out of a JZX 100, I oh know 110 super uh, chaser. And it came with that piece on it. So with that piece on it, we're kind of poking back there. So the shifter would come up right at the back. Which I knew was going to be the case. So we're just coming up with an idea of, of how we're going to sort this problem out. Whether I stick with this, bring it up right back there. Or I swap the back of the shifter over to the W box that came out of it, which might be possible as well. And that puts it in a nice place. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do there. But box is coming out later on. We'll have a look at that sort of plan. Into the wiring. So those plugs under there look standard to me. So that doesn't look too bad. There's a whole mess. Rat's nest under there. under the. So... Turbo timers and looks like possibly an alarm. So I'm not really looking forward to that. So over here we have the Supra loom. And it's been butchered. So over here, the plugs are all cut. Joined. These ones have all been joined. These ones have been joined. Which is really, really weird because this was a factory turbo Supra. So maybe... When it had the manual conversion, they butchered the loom. I don't think you need to. You just pull some pins, pull some wires, swap looms around. It's not too bad. So I'm not actually sure quite why that's been butchered like it has. But there's the UZ loom. So I'm going to set that up. There's only a couple of wires out of this that I'll actually need. Uh, switch for the heater. And power steering idle up, which I think is that one. I'll check that. That's where the power for the coils and injectors will come through, so we'll need that one. And then a couple of these plugs, so these may end up, I may just reuse the bodies, and hopefully I've got the right pins and we can recrimp the pins and reuse the plug to get rid of all those joints. So I'll do a little bit of a rundown of the wiring, but I'm probably not going to go really in depth on this one. We are on a time frame. And so less time to do videos, more time doing what doing actual real work. So we'll keep you updated as our progress goes through our day. And uh, we'll talk to you once I've got a bit more work done. So the motor's coming out again, so we can pull the mounts off it and pull the headers off it, sort them out. I want to do that alternator wiring too. You can probably do the alternator wiring. Probably not this afternoon. Probably not this afternoon. Put them all together and cut them the same. Mm -hmm. Three little wires, one big wire. You want that on the stand? Um, we might as well just about put it back on its stand, eh? Yeah, it's going to be up for a couple of days. We'll put it back out. Hope try and put it back on on Wednesday. Okay. Oh, I might have dropped it onto the. Dropped 
drop it down a bit. I don't think we'll put the clutch on the stand, eh? Well, look. Probably because it's not going to fit. Now, it's like deja vu because several days ago it was on that stand and now it's back on that stand. Drop it out. Yeah. Right, in here. Oh, we better grab those nuts. If you. Oh, the one's on the floor. If you get a chance, drop a hole through there. Yeah. And then sit the charcoal canister back into place. <clears throat> I'll put it up the right way. And when you put it in place and then bend them straighter. Mm. This is going to go into the chassis rail. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to see if I can find another master cylinder quickly to try and get it running good enough. Um, here's some nuts. There you go. Some nuts. And if you take, you grab the 17, I'll whip this power steer off and whip that other power steer off and they can go as well. Yeah, I reckon we put a bit of that big heat sleeve over this. They take them covers off. I, they do need to come off. Yes, you need to take the covers off. Mm. I'm working my way through each of these wires and just kind of doing a, a wiring diagram, wiring plan in my head as I normally do. But I was struggling to find continuity between this one when I was tracing it. And it had actually broken just by the crimp. Luckily it wasn't anything critical. This is the air conditioning input. And this car won't be running air conditioning at the moment. I'm just going to pop this apart. See what we've actually got in here. Oh, a big crimp. Big ugly barrel crimps with shrink wrap. Yuck. Chocolate box connectors. Other kinds of crimps. Sometimes I wonder how these cars run. So what I'm actually doing is I'm going through, I've got some diagrams, and I write up every single wire. Also, because this is converted auto to manual, working out which ones are cut off, and what isn't and isn't done, and what people have done in the past. And then I'll overlay that onto the UZ loom and work out a plan. Kind of do a lot of it in my head because I've been doing quite a few. Right, back into it. I give that a grind up. Yeah, just cover everything up. Hit it with a sanding disc. It wasn't actually too bad, eh? At the end of the day. It wasn't actually because the hoses sit out here. Yeah. No, it wasn't bad at all. It'll just take off the edges. It's not going to really cause too much of a problem. Otherwise, we can always put some conduit over just that bit. That's my little heat shrink. Yep. Um, pretty much wiring, as long as I get the wiring done, will sort of gearbox. Clutch, you just got to put it in the container, go get a clutch and put a clutch on. So that all just sort of slips. There's a spigot bearing to go in too, so we don't forget the spigot bearing because it hasn't had one put on it. I've got them here. Hey, there'll be a little worry if we put it in and we have to take it out again. So it's just the only ones really the gear stick lever. That's the only sort of major mm. uncertainty. Yeah, and I'll see if throttle cable's going to be this week, but clutch master might not be next till next week. Oh, after the third in the new year, which will be a pain in the backside. I'll see if you've got something to do. Hmm. Put a Hilux one in the meantime. What about that one out of that Hilux? I try to get my big. I've got an oversized one. I've got a three quarter that I can put in. So it just depends whether that bracket's out wide enough. 
drove that hull on in the power steel lines at the end of the week. We can make it go vroom vroom. She can have a car back for a for a birthday. We can hear it running for a birthday on Saturday. Here's the goal. She'll be happy, eh? Birthday present and Christmas, both in one go. <coughs> make sure your car's going. And exhaust and stuff like that. We don't care about that. Yeah. Exhaust when she gets, she'll be wrapped. But she can sit out there and idle. Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought, no, the throttle will work. It'll sound, it'll sound nice anyway. The throttle will work. It'll, it'll rev and dump planes. Should be sweet. Just can't put them in gear because it's going to clutch. Because it's going to clutch, yeah. So a little bit of a tip. When you're working through this wiring, if you want to find the taco wire, in the diagnostic box of these older cars, we've got uh, IG poking out here. Generally has a black wire. And it will come from somewhere near the igniter. So here's your igniter. It actually comes, it's a black wire. And this plug here, here you go. And it also comes over to this mess over here and it's the black wire there. So when you're looking for that ignition of that taco wire, it's in that diagnostic box on the IG, IG negative. Update on the Supra for another day. Uh, the engine loom for the UZ is sitting on my bench. I've deciphered this mess and I've got my own diagrams and I've got a bit of a wiring plan happening. So that was the 1G GTE. Every single wire on the body plugs was cut. So I've kind of got a feeling that when it was converted from auto uh, yeah, to auto to manual loom, that possibly the loom, the plugs were cut off. And several of them just fell to pieces. I was having trouble tracing them and that's because there was no continuity in the joints. The engine bay has gone backwards. So there's our engine bay. The engine is sitting back on its engine stand. Top back on there. Power steer lines are away to get done, so that's good. And we'll get the, uh, the engine mounts get welded up. And there's a few little bits and pieces in here to do. Drilling a hole and... <laughs> Throttle cable is getting made this week, so that was great. But I heard bad news on the slaves... Oh no, the clutch master. So the clutch master is getting... Um, re-sleeved out to 11 sixteenths. But it can't be done before Christmas, which is a bit of a pain, because I'm really trying to get this one up and running. But I've still got to get a wiring loom done, so that's going to be the hold up. Now here's the gearbox that came out of it. So that was the, the original box from behind the 1G. And yeah, it's probably not in the best of conditions. What I'm attempting to do though is get this new box to sit in the right place. So it had the extension. Oh, I was wandering around with the extension. Had this extension. So with a bit of changing, uh, there, it's probably moved at about 50 mils. Just guessing there. Uh, different style of gear stick, and this gear stick is ugly. So we might have to do a bit of a change there. But at least that's a move in the right direction. So I'm pretty happy with that. There's a few changes to be made yet. Another bush to be made inside, and I've got a sort these holders out but that's looking really good it actually changes gear pretty good i'd really like a new gear stick so if we look inside this cabin it's getting a bit dark here but i think if i just trim through here the gear stick's going to sit about here which i think will just about be acceptable the other way it was going to sit sort of here, which was going to be a pain in the backside. There's other supports and other stuff in there that was just going to give me grief. So if I can just trim that out and I'm going to cross my fingers, we should be pretty good. I've traced the fuel pump wiring. And so that was positive. And the reverse lights, those were the, the two that I was just... Uh, 
wasn't sure where they went. So this one's actually got a fuel pump resistor here and the extra relay. So normally they're switched by the airflow meter. When the flap in the airflow meter moves, it actually had a, 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 had a flap type and that would move, that would fire the fuel pump. And then when you went into higher revs, more throttle opening, it would clip the second relay and bypass the resistor. And that is perfect. So we will be using that system in the UZ. And it'll work just lovely. Well, fingers crossed it'll work lovely. Of course it will. That's what it did on the last one. So I'm going to call it a night for now. Ponder my gearbox change. But I'm actually feeling pretty happy. Uh, yeah, take a brand new gearbox, pull it apart and modify it. But it was lovely to change. And it was nice and clean inside. We'll talk to you tomorrow after I've had a bit of a break.